Speaking of morals, I mean, Aries is a very honest sign. Fire is the, the element of integrity, of standing up for what you believe in, and having code, having an honor code, you know? And so Aries is already a very, very honorable sign. And in fact, even though Jupiter, the planet that rules Sag, is said to be more the sign of uh, the planet of, of morality, of higher being and teaching and whatnot, all fire signs still have that inherent code of honor in them. And so Aries teaches Sag about how to not only, <coughs> you know, wax eloquently about philosophical principles and to have all these high principles and everything, but to put them in practice. Aries is very much about results and um, about incorporating their inherent integrity in everything that they do, which is a really big lesson for Sag, who can kind of sometimes be very much more theoretical about things instead of acting them out. You know? So both of these signs really get the other one to open up, to grow, because there's nothing better than a very philosophical, thoughtful Aries who learns those traits from a Sag. And there's nothing better than a Sag who has learned how to stand up for what they believe in and stand up for their principles and really do something about it instead of just, you know, feeling good about having all these principles. You know, at the end of the day, you got to accomplish something. That's the whole point of, of, of life, you know, of having this, this incredible power and fire is to do something with it. And at your own time, to not rush it, to not... Uh, squander it on, you know, meaningless projects or meaningless outlets, but to do something completely with your being, heart felt and soul felt, and doing something that's meaningful so that eventually, you know, when you die, you feel like you did something worthwhile and something only you could do. And really it all comes down to being worthwhile. So those are some of the really nice, beautiful things. Let's talk about some of the challenges. Fire is also ego. It is childlike enthusiasm and also the negative aspect, the brat, you know, who's very much about me, 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 me. I'm going to do whatever I want. Wah. <laughs> That's the challenge with fire energy. And with this, these signs is making sure ego is not in the way, making sure that these signs aren't, that these people aren't, aren't, competing with each other, that they're working with each other, and that they are they have their own separate life of competition. You know, for Aries especially, it's necessary to compete in some way, to be growing and getting better and better and better. It's very important to channel that, to have an outlet for that, whether that be work or a hobby or something other than the relationship, because when two fire signs come together, you have all this just <sighs> ego, and ego is a great thing, and it's also a very challenging thing, and... Um, that challenging manifestation in this relationship is just selfishness. Both signs thinking they're always right, um, acting like they're the best, acting like, you know, they have something to prove and they have to be better. And everything I just said is a bit more Aries and Sag, but then Sag has that whole thing of, well, I'm always right, and the only way that there is is the way I see it. Again, these are the challenges. After overcoming these challenges, we reach the highest benefit manifestation, which is everything I was talking about before of these two individuals working seamlessly with each other to support each other and to not be dependent, but to be giving each other energy and getting energy naturally back. Uh, just a healthy relationship. So, again, these are the challenges, the <laughs> manifestation of this relationship. That's a scientific term, by the way. <laughs> oh, goodness. Sag can definitely... Sag isn't quite so headstrong as Aries. Aries is definitely the sign that's more likely to be, I'm right, I'm going to go ahead and do it the way I, I want to, you know, nyan, nyan, nyan. Um, but Sag can get that very condescending, moralistic energy of... Oh, I am just a wise sage, and everybody else is just here to get my guidance and advice. <laughs> oh my goodness, both of those attitudes are annoying, <laughs> and they're they're not they're not they don't work. You know, they don't function as well as they could. You know, instead of the sage writing out this beautiful philosophical treatise on life, and then having the Aries read it and 
add their perspective and whatever, or having, you know, the Aries accomplish something great and the Sag supporting them through insight. There's there's a million different better scenarios than just, well, I'm always right. No, I'm always right. Or I'm better than you. No, I'm better than you. It's so stupid. <laughs> and, um, I mean, both, both Sag and Aries know this. They're not... Even if, you know, ego flares up in that second and it says, oh, me, 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 what I think, what I feel, yada, yada, yada. They, they both are, th I mean, fire is so much more thoughtful than it's given credit for. And it, it reflects. And the whole reason that fire is said to be ego-based is because, well, it is. <laughs> but the good part of ego, too, is to really think about things and be self-reflective, to be introspective to a degree. And to really think, you know... I acted pretty ridiculously in that case. What should I learn from that so I don't do that again? The focus is on I, but there's so much thoughtfulness there. There's so much progressive individualistic energy that isn't present in water, earth, or even air. And so fire can make mistakes, absolutely. We all make mistakes. But the cool thing about fire is when those mistakes are made, they're, they're really learned from if that fire sign is going to really think about it and really reflect on, you know, I fucked up. I should figure out how and why I fucked up and make sure I shouldn't do that again. Definitely. A little bit of reflection goes a long way for fire signs. The cool thing about this relationship is because you have just that. You have a fire partner. You have somebody that you can work with. Somebody that's going to understand you inherently for who you are on so many levels that it's you don't even have to explain. Aries and Sag is a wonderful team. It truly gets both to, to think broader, to be more individualistic, to, to embody that Aquarian ideal of being a true original individual. And both signs have so much fire, so much enthusiasm, that to have that bit of air guidance in the form of this relationship, Sun, Sun, Aquarius, Composite, is invaluable. And the cool thing is, it's not just like a working relationship. There's true friendship there. There's true tolerance for each other. Acceptance and understanding. And it can be kind of cold at first, Sun Sign Aquarius. But once those flowing feelings of friendship are put into motion, they can't stop. Especially with these two fire signs. And any ego flare-ups or misunderstandings that happen along the way are pretty handily dealt with. It's really hard for these two signs to to end up hating each other. Um, now, if you throw in, like, say, like a Venus and Scorpio on the Sag end, and, say, Venus and Aquarius and on the Aries end, like, it's a lot easier. With, basically, other other planetary placements can make this relationship more challenging. But overall, Sun Sign Aries, Sun Sign Sag get along famously and they really 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 teach each other so many things and they they grow and they explore life together and they have somebody that can actually keep up with them which is so rare for these two signs as individuals to have a true partner that understands them and that gets them to go further and to get broader and also is able to keep up with them in their own life journeys and adventures whether it's a friendship, a partnership, a romantic relationship, um, you know, however this manifests, this is a beautiful relationship. And you know, all all relationships have beauty, absolutely, and they have their their gifts that are unique to them. But this is definitely one of the relationships that is more. It's more apparent at how this relationship is so vibrant. And to the individuals, it's very apparent how helpful this relationship is in learning about oneself, about others, about anything, about life. So, uh, I think that's all I have to say. Namaste.